Hi, I'm Mitz McBuild. You may recognize me from other instructional videos like Stab and Sew, The Beginner's Guide to Surgery at Home, or Fireproof Your Home, The Asbestos Way. Today I'll be showing you how to build this Hidden Dice Tower Kit. Well, before we begin, of course, you're going to need to unpack everything. Inside your box, you're going to find four pieces of the outer case. You're going to find the two swing arms, the center section of the tower, which is likely pre-built, you're going to find the lid, the handle for that lid, as well as the alignment square, the two pieces of the spring stop, and a bag of hardware. You're also going to need some basic hand tools, several different types of glues and adhesives, some paper towels to clean up messes, and of course lube and alcohol. Inside that bag of hardware you'll find two 10 millimeter Chicago screws, two 8 mm Chicago screws, four 6 mm, and enough necessary screw heads to attach them all. You'll also find three pieces of padding, several springs, an 80 mm hinge pin, an 85 mm Chicago screw, or two 12 mm ones. For mounting the dice tower under your table, you'll get four washers, four wood screws, and four angle brackets. Now it's time for the work to begin. If you have a nicer table, you're going to want to cover it with either cardboard or plastic, and then you can lay out all the necessary pieces so you're ready to work. If the center of your tower is indeed assembled, the first thing you're going to want to do is take it apart. Start by prying gently and evenly near all the tabs, and if there's some resistance, insert a screwdriver and gently pry it apart. Be careful not to pull too hard from one end, as this can snap some of the acrylic tabs. Now that everything's apart, you're going to want to get a clean rag or paper towel, soak it with some isopropyl alcohol, and we're going to use that to clean up all the individual pieces. Anything that was cut on the laser cutter will have a little bit of residual residue from smoke and dust, but the alcohol should remove it easily. Now that everything's good and clean, it's time to glue our first few bits. We're going to start with the landing pads, as well as these two 10mm Chicago screws. Notice they have a half moon shape cut into the head. These need to be glued in first because they go on the innermost section of the tower. They're going to be on the inside with the threads pointing out. Test fit them first and if you encounter any resistance at all, use a file or small drill bit to clean up the holes. They need to move back and forth freely because we're going to be gluing them in with super glue. And as I'm sure you're aware, super glue sets up nearly immediately. It's important that the head of the screw is seated fully down against the acrylic so that enough of it protrudes out the other side. Next we'll be using contact cement or similar to adhere the cloth pads to the dice landing surfaces. Starting with the dice tray, it's important that we get a nice even coat of contact cement all over the bottom without getting any on the sides. If you do get some on the sides, a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel will also help clean this up. As for the cloth pads themselves, make sure that the back is fully covered, but avoid getting any on the front of the pad. If you're familiar with contact cement, then you know that you want to let this set up and dry until it's tacky and ready to be applied together. Different brands have different dry times, so follow the instructions on the can. When it's time to mate the two surfaces together, it can be a bit intimidating, but just take your time and make sure that you start with one corner and apply it as close to the edge as possible, and then use your finger to smooth out so that no bubbles and wrinkles appear. And after that, you can then use either a screwdriver, another flat, but not sharp metal tool, or even the head of one of those Chicago screws in order to press the corners down nice and tight. Once that's all done, we're going to set it aside and work on the lower landing ramp. The process, of course, will be exactly the same, but as you're applying the contact adhesive to the lower landing ramp, try to make sure that you don't get any glue on the edge tabs. These two rectangles end up going inside of another piece of acrylic, so they don't need any cloth or glue on top of them. When mating the cloth onto this piece, make sure that the front is the part that you align perfectly. The back will be deep inside the tower and hard to see, while this front line here will be visible right next to the dice tray. Now unlike the lower ramp, the upper ramp actually has a top and bottom. You can see the angle cut on it here, and the larger of the two surfaces is the top, which is where we'll be applying the cloth. Similar to the last one, make sure you do not get any adhesive on these two rectangle tabs. 
Mating these two pieces together can also be a bit intimidating, but I've found that the best thing to do is to line up the front edge and make sure it's nice and square, and from that point on it'll be very easy to make sure that the legs line up as well. Also, as long as you're only off by a tiny little bit, you can use your finger to stretch the cloth to the edge to make it line up perfectly. With all those pieces done, it's time to move on to building the outer case. We have four pieces, all of which have an outside, which is smooth, and an inside, which includes these six recessed holes. In order to glue the acrylic pieces together, I like to use E6000. Not because it's the strongest glue, but because it's flexible and it takes a long time to dry. If you make a mistake, or if you need to readjust something, it's nice to be able to move things around or take them completely apart and re-glue them. If you were to use a plastic weld or some type of super glue, you'd be unable to do this. Notice that as I'm applying the glue to the inside of the box joints, I'm putting it on the outside edge. This way, if any glue leaks out, it'll be on the outside of the box away from the other section of the dice tower. Next, I'm going to move on to the third wall of the case. I want to make sure that the two pieces that are facing each other are both identical. Then repeat the process of adding a small dab of glue to each of the box joints. Then do the same for the case wall that you're going to be adding. For the last section, lay what you have on its back and apply glue to all of the box joints that are facing up. Then do the same for the last remaining piece of the case and mate them together. Now that all four walls of the case are done, it's time to add the alignment base. You'll want to glue this on while the glue of the case is still wet. That way, anything that needs to wiggle around or readjust can do so easily. The only difference between these joints and the ones you previously glued is that you can now add glue to both the top and bottom of each box joint, making sure to use still a small amount of glue, but cover every single surface. Now that all the joints have been glued together, you're going to go around and carefully inspect and find any extra glue that may have squished out. Use that same rag or paper towel that's wet with alcohol and simply pinch the corners to remove any glue. Make sure everything is firmly pressed together and then we're going to let the glue dry for about 24 hours. If you own wood clamps, now would be a good time to apply them, using only a very small amount of pressure to clamp everything in place. If you do not own wood clamps, but you're still noticing small gaps in between the box joints and you want to press it together tightly, have someone help you by pressing the box joints together and then wrap the entire case in a small amount of scotch tape or painter's tape. Now just set the case aside where it will be undisturbed for 24 hours. Before we build the inner part of the tower, we're going to assemble the spring stop. While not completely necessary, if you do have a small file, you can use it to clean up the inside edges. We're also going to add a small amount of grease to the inside of each of these three holes. You can use a Q-tip to make this process easier. Next, we're going to drop the springs into the female portion of the stop. You'll likely only have three springs, but if you do have six, go ahead and put two into each section. Once it's held together, it's time for the very important test squishes. This piece will only go into the tower in one direction, so if it doesn't fit, flip it around. This is also a great time to add some lubricant to the little tabs. Next, we're going to find the back of the tower and line it up. You'll notice that the top piece here has a smaller tab than the bottom piece here. We're going to grab that bottle of E6000, and I'm going to apply a very tiny dab, this time to the inside edge of each piece. The outside portion of this tower will both be visible, so we want to avoid having glue on it for that reason, but it also needs to slide nicely inside of the case, so having bubbles of glue sticking out is just going to hinder that process. Once that is all snapped together nice and snugly, we're going to repeat the process for the other side, making sure again to try to keep all the glue on the inside sections so that it does not bubble out. Of course, we're going to need to line up the spring stop before we start snapping them together to make sure that everything's going to work smoothly. Again, if some glue does bubble out, just go ahead and get that paper towel that's soaked down with alcohol and use it to clean up any excess. Next, we're going to grab the front of the tower, as well as the two intersections, and the dice ramps. 
Now for the front of the tower, you're only going to put glue on the top three recesses. For the matching intersection, you are going to put glue on all of its box joints. Once that's all together and cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and install the dice ramps. Make sure that these have the cloth side facing up, and there is no need to add any glue at this time. And for the other side of the front piece, we are going to add those same three dabs of glue to the top three box joints, and then of course put glue into every one of the box joints on the other piece. When mating these two pieces together, make sure that the dice ramps, of course, fit into the slots first, and then from there you can snap everything together. Now it's going to be important to now mate the front and back of the tower together while both of them still have the glue wet. The back section is going to need to be pried apart just slightly, and if the glue has dried already, you will not be able to do that. We're going to start by adding those small dabs of glue to each of the box joints on the back section. Again, erring on the side of putting too much glue on the inside rather than the outside of each joint. And then we're going to do the same to the front section. After that, put a very small amount of glue all over the surface of the inner panels. Make sure not to get glue near the front and the hinge pin because that will be an exposed surface. It's now time to mate these two pieces together. Again, make sure that the back section has been pried open slightly so that when you insert the front section, it does not smear all of that glue up to the front where you don't want it. Once it has been pushed all together and snapped tight, carefully inspect every joint to make sure that it is flush and that there are no gaps between them, and also make sure that any excess glue has been wiped away. Next, you can apply wood clamps and or tape in order to keep everything held in place. And again, this part is going to be drying for 24 hours as well. Once all of your glue is dried, it's time to combine all of our components into a finished dice tower. The lid and handle go together easily enough. It's simply a matter of pushing the hinge pin all the way through. There should be almost zero resistance for the pin to slide through the actual handle, but on either side of the lid, it will likely be very snug. You can use a drill bit to drill out one side and then use a screwdriver or similar tool to press the pin home. When done correctly, this should require no glue to hold it in place snugly. Next, we're going to move on to the two swing arms that hold the dice tray in place. Now, these are likely going to be very snug, and you're going to, again, want to clean them up and make sure that they pivot nice and smoothly, but they shouldn't be loose or floppy. Once that is done, you're going to want to break out the lube again and apply a little bit of grease to both of the metal pins on either side of the tower. Be careful to only put grease on the outside of the metal and not inside where the threads are. In the next step, we're going to be adding thread locker, and if there's grease inside of the threads, that's going to cause all sorts of problems. Now, before you add the thread locker, you're going to want to tighten those screws all the way down and check the fitment. If, with the screw tightened all the way down, the swing arm still moves freely, you're good to go. But if it's a little snug, you're going to want to back the screw off and see how far you had to back it off to make it fit the way you'd like. Keep track of that amount, whether it's a quarter turn or half turn or what have you. And once you've applied the thread locker, you're going to again tighten the screw all the way down and then back it off the same amount. And then after that, you're going to not touch it. You'll be very tempted to wiggle the swing arm back and forth to check that fitment. But when you do that, it will move the screw around, which will break the adhesive, and thus the Loctite will not be doing its job. So instead, set that piece aside and work on the other one. The other swing arm is going to get a thin layer of grease first, and then the other 8mm Chicago screw is going to go inside of it so it can then be bolted to the dice tray. The dice tray is going to get a little bit of grease on the inside as well, and then we're going to repeat the same process as we did for the first one. We're going to tighten the screw down, find out where it sits, make sure everything rotates properly, and then take it apart and repeat the process with Loctite installed this time. Again, once you're done, you're going to not fiddle with it. Set it aside. Loctite only takes about 20 minutes to set up, so wait at least that long until you start moving these parts again. Once you've waited for those to set up, we're going to now repeat the process for the other two. Of course, we're going to make sure we add grease, check the fitting of all the screws, add the Loctite, tighten them back down again, 
and then once they're both tightened down, let it sit. With all four of those screws done, you can now check the function of the lid, make sure everything operates and moves smoothly. If it doesn't, you're going to have to take them apart and do it again. If everything is functioning as it should, it's time to finally attach the tower to the case. We're going to slide them inside, check that everything functions as it should, and then flip it upside down. If you have a single long Chicago screw, it'll go all the way through and tie everything together. If you have two 12 millimeter screws, you're going to put one on either side, but either way, you can tighten these screws all the way down. Add Loctite if you feel it necessary, but it should not be a problem. And that's it. Your tower is done. It's time to move on to installing it inside the table. Now, of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is figure out where you'd like to install your dice tower. Start by putting some painter's tape in the approximate location of where you'd like it to go. After that, you can use a measuring tape to mark the corners and make sure that it's evenly spaced and parallel. Next, you're going to put the dice tower upside down on top of the painter's tape and mark around it using a pen or pencil. Avoid using a marker, as the marker will be very difficult to get off of the tower. Next, you're going to use a sturdy metal ruler and a razor knife in order to cut along the lines and score the top of the table. Make sure to start in the corner and pull toward the middle. If you're starting in the middle and pulling toward the corner, you will probably go past the corner and score more than you mean to. Failure to cut these deep score marks will cause a problem when you end up using the jigsaw. As you're cutting along the edge of those lines, you're going to get little chips that will fly up and ruin the veneer. Once you've cut score marks all the way through the tape and the table, you can now remove the tape, and this will just make it easier to see where your marks are. Next, I'm going to use a large spade drill bit to drill a hole into the table, which is larger than the saw blade I plan to use. I'm going to do this for two corners of the square cutout, being careful to stay inside the lines and not hitting the edge of the tape. Next, I'm going to use a jigsaw to start cutting along the edge of the lines. I'm going to start in the corner and then work toward the opposite corner, trying to make sure I just barely touch the inside of the tape line. I'll then turn the saw around and make my way back toward the first corner, taking my time to be very careful and make sure that I'm staying on the inside of the tape line without actually hitting it. I sped up the last clip just a little bit, and I want to show you this cut in real time so you can see just how much time I am taking as I slowly work across the table, being sure to keep the saw blade where I want it. With the rough cut done, it's time to sand the edges and clean them up. Now here I am using a power finger sander, but you may remember that the name of the show is More Tools Than Scents. Not only are most people unlikely to own this tool, it's not actually the best way to do the job. If you want to make sure that your cutout is exactly the right size and all the corners are nice and straight and true, the best tool for the job is actually just a block of wood with some sandpaper wrapped around it. This of course will be much slower, however, if you go too far and overdo it, there's really no way to make the hole smaller at this point. So take your time sanding out a little bit at a time, frequently stopping to check and see if it's the right size. When you're done, you want the lid of the dice tower to fit inside the hole, and you want to be able to fit about two playing cards in the gap on all four sides. This square is not quite done yet and needs to be further sanded. With the hole cut, it's time to move on to the actual installation. I'm going to need a drill with a bit and a stopper. I'm going to need some screwdrivers, and of course the finished dice tower, and those playing cards. You're going to want to take that table you cut the hole into and flip it completely upside down. If you're just working on a leaf like I am, this is going to make this much easier. Using the playing cards, you're going to want to shim all four sides of the dice tower, making sure to put an equal number of cards in every side, and making sure that they're fit snugly so that nothing can move around. At this point, I can remove one set of cards, and now I'll use the hinges to line up and mark the holes on the table. At this point in time, I'm also going to want to check which of the three mounting holes in the side of the dice tower is best centered inside the slotted angle iron. This will be important in a moment when I need to install the Chicago screw inside of the mounting hole. I'm going to repeat the process for the other side, and then remove the dice tower from the table. Next, we're going to drill four pilot holes for the four wood screws that will attach the brackets. Make sure that the drill bit that you're using does not protrude down further than the thickness of the table. If it does, use an extra piece of wood on top of the table as a spacer to ensure that the drill bit doesn't go all the way through and ruin the finish. 
After those pilot holes are drilled, I can now disassemble the tower in order to install the last four Chicago screws. A small dab of super glue will go into the appropriate countersunk hole, and then I can drop the Chicago screw in and press it home. Repeat that process for all four screws, and then reassemble the dice tower. We're now going to place the dice tower back into the mounting hole, and again shim it with playing cards. In order to make it easy to install the brackets with the playing cards installed, it may be necessary to cut some into slivers so that you can place them down low and out of the way. I'm now going to install the four screw heads, and these will also get the four washers underneath of them. Make sure to tighten these down firmly, but don't overdo it. Finally, it's time to install the four wood screws. Make sure that everything is set exactly the way you want before you do this, because wood screws are not meant to be installed more than once. If something is out of alignment, you can loosen and then readjust the four Chicago screws, but try to avoid loosening and then retightening the wood screws, as every time you do, it becomes weaker. It's now time to turn your table right side up and admire all your hard work. Well, that concludes the build video. Hopefully you're happy with what you have achieved. And if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll be happy to help you out as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Thanks for buying. Stay nerdy, my friends.